In this video, we are going to tell you why, despite common belief, buying a Nintendo Switch will not actually solve all your problems. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is Jimmy and I'd like to welcome you to another segment of BG Student Bible Studies. Now, when you were younger, did you ever think about what it would be like to have your first job? Now, when I was younger, I definitely thought about this, but I didn't think about what you might think I would think about. So I didn't think about what the job was actually going to be, you know, who I was around or what I was actually going to be doing. What I really fantasized about was the paychecks. So I imagined having this endless supply of money, which basically meant I could buy anything I wanted. I imagined going to the store, walking down the aisle, seeing all the stuff I wanted, not even looking at the price tags because I had a job and I knew I could afford it. And this fantasy went even farther. I'm like, with all this money I have, you know, I'll give some away. You know, my family, they want stuff too. I could buy them stuff. So I thought about all the different things that I could buy for them and how happy they would be to finally get it. And I didn't mind because with all this money I was going to have, I was going to have more than enough. But fast forward to my first actual job, when I received that first paycheck, my mindset started to change just a little bit because I saw that I had worked all these long hours and I only made this amount of money. I saw all the things that I wanted and how much money was actually in my bank account and the ideas of buying my family everything that they wanted started to fade. Now, I saw a big difference in the way that I acted when I thought I had enough compared to when I knew I did not have enough. And I think a lot of us are wired like this because there's one thing that we're all searching for, and that's satisfaction. But sometimes our search for satisfaction makes us selfish. And in a lot of ways, I think this is what we're seeing around us recently. So many people are worried about not having enough that they will do just about anything to make sure that they are taken care of. And we do the same thing. There's so many avenues that we take to try to get there, but we're all searching for satisfaction. We think that if we could just buy a Nintendo Switch, then we would be satisfied. Or if we could just have the perfect boyfriend or the perfect girlfriend, then our life would be great. Or if we were just a little bit taller, then it would be enough. And all of these things promise us satisfaction. And sure, they'll satisfy us for a season, but we realize these things cannot satisfy us for the long term. So it's on to the next thing. The thing that we just know will finally be enough, will finally satisfy us. We continue chasing things. We go through this cycle because we're not satisfied. But things don't have to be this way. Jesus came on the scene and totally transformed the way that we think about satisfaction. He showed that our satisfaction does not have to be dependent on our circumstances. Matthew 16, 25 says, if you seek to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. But for us, we want to call the shots. We want to be in control of our lives. But Jesus is saying, if you hold so tightly onto your life and you want to be in control and do things your way, just like when you're holding sand, the tighter you hold it, the more it's going to slip through your fingers. He's saying, if you want to experience true life, you're going to have to do things his way. And the way that Jesus lives is very different. One of the things I found so interesting about Jesus is found in Mark 10, 45. It says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now imagine if a king invited you to a dinner, and when you arrived, to your surprise, he didn't have a bunch of servants doing every little thing for him, but instead he was serving everyone around him. Jesus is called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if anyone deserved to be served, it was him. But still, he came to serve those who were around him. But Jesus took it even farther than this. Not only did he come to serve, but he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And through all of this, he was still able to be satisfied because his satisfaction was not dependent on his circumstances. John 4.34 tells us where his satisfaction came from. It says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So if you are tired of chasing things and still feeling empty, I want to tell you the only thing that's truly going to satisfy you is having and living in a relationship with Jesus. Because it's one thing to know that Jesus loves you, but it's an entirely different thing to be in a relationship with the God that created you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for allowing us, even though 
everything seems to be closed down, you are still able to get your word to your people. Father, I thank you that you have instituted a church in every household and that your word is still making its way throughout the entire earth. Father, I pray that through this message, you would allow people to realize that things will promise them satisfaction, but it will leave them empty at the end of the day. Father, show us that you are the way to truly satisfy our hearts. Father, I pray that through a relationship with your son, that we could be truly satisfied and live in the plan that you have for our life. Father, I thank you for your perfect plan. And I pray that we would walk in that and that we would show your love to the people around us. I thank you for everything you do and ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.